Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and this tutorial is part of a Learn React tutorial series. I'll give a link to the full playlist in the description below. Today we're going to be learning about React Router, and you can see I have a React.js blog here, and this application is like a full website where React is known for creating amazing single-page applications, commonly abbreviated as SPA, S-P-A. You can make a full website experience. Here we have our home page with a feed that has different blog posts. We have a page for new posts. We have an about page. And if we go back to the feed, we can click on any blog post and get a page with the full post and the ability to delete the post. And we're accomplishing all of this with React Router. And as I click on the different pages, the URL does change at the top. However, these pages are not requested from the server. These are components that are routed using React Router, and therefore you get an almost instantaneous response which is also an excellent user experience. With that said, and this project previewed, let's get started on building it with React Router. I've got a jump start on our React project here in Visual Studio Code, and I'll just walk you through this really quickly. It's what we did in the first tutorial in the series. We type npx create-react-app, and then we name the folder we want to create, like I created 16tut. So you need to be in the parent folder when you do this, and then you go ahead and press enter, and Create React App will set up a new project for you. After that, use Visual Studio Code to open the new folder that you've created. And once you're in this folder, you need to add one more dependency, and that is the React Router. And here we'll type npm i and then react-router-dom and then dash capital S, and we'll save that as a production dependency. And once you've installed that, you can press enter, of course, to do that. Once you have that installed, you can go to your package JSON file and you will see React Router DOM included in the dependencies in your package JSON. Now from there, I've also shown in the previous tutorials how to clear out a new React application, but what you want to do is open your source folder and just delete all the files except for app.js, index.css, and index.js. Then you need to go into your index.js folder and you want to remove the comments you see starting on line 13. And there will also be an import for report web vitals up at the top and you can remove that. And then in the app.js, you wanna remove both imports at the top and remove everything that's inside of the div with the class name app. And make sure you've installed that React Router DOM dependency as well that we see in package JSON. And we'll begin working on the project. Let's start by going to the index.js. And here we need to import some things from React Router. So we'll import, and then with curly braces, we'll say browser router, but then let's say as router. So we can just refer to it as router. And then we'll also import route. And this will all be from react-router-dom, as we see there. And now inside of the JSX, Instead of what we see here, in, well, we'll keep this part that has the strict mode, but then instead of what we see here, we'll put router, and then we'll take the closing router and put it after the app component. So the app component is inside the router, but we're going to change this as well. Let's switch this to route, and now let's have a path attribute, and we'll set this equal to the root path, which is just a slash, and then we can specify the component. So we'll say component, and inside of curly braces, we can say app. And now we've specified the app component will respond to the root route for our application. So let's save this part of the index.js, and now we'll be finished with that, and everything about our application will now be inside of React Router, and we can use everything associated with React Router, including some hooks that come with the React Router DOM package. Okay, let's move over to the app.js file now. And how React Router works is it routes components. Sometimes we'll always want a component to stay on the page, like a header or a nav bar or maybe a footer. 
but then other times we'll want the main area of the page to change and React Router can route those components based on URL file paths. But before we can do that, we really need to have these components created and import them into our app. So we'll start out with some import statements to just list out the components we're going to create. We're going to create a header and this will be from dot slash header. And then we're going to import a nav, and this will be from dot slash nav. And then we'll import a footer. Now these will all be the components that stay on the page even when the other components change. So the header, nav, and footer will be consistent. But then after that, we'll have a main area of the page, actually a main element. And the components that occupy the main element will change. And one of those we'll just call home. And of course it will be from dot slash home. Another would be a page to create a new post. So we'll have that from dot slash new post. Another one would be a post page where we can see the full page for the post. The home would just give us a little clip of the blog post, but then we want to see the full details on this page. So we'll call this post page. And then we're going to have another one that's an about page. And that's from dot slash about. And then finally, we want a page that shows up for a 404 error, basically a missing page. You've requested a page that doesn't exist. And so we need all of those different ones. And that gives us five different options to route to in the main area of the page. Four of them we want as part of the application. And then one we would just want to show as an error for a 404 missing a request. And after that, we need to go ahead and import some things from React Router. So once again, we'll destructure here and we want route. We want switch as we'll switch between the routes. And then we want a hook that comes with React Router and that's use history. React Router has several custom hooks and this one will allow us to access the browser history. But React Router does not make requests from the server. Again, it just routes within the app. And of course that responds faster so it improves the user experience as well. And this needs to be from React Router DOM. And after that, I believe, oh, let's go ahead and import some hooks we're going to use in this page too before I'm finished here. So let's import use state. We'll definitely use state and use effect. And we'll make these from React, of course. Okay, now that we're finished with these imports, we're not running the app yet. Of course, they would create errors because they don't exist. But now we can create at least the basics of each of these components to import into our app and then begin to route them with React Router. I'm going to collapse the open editors here for now. And now inside of the source folder, we'll start creating our components. And so we need a new file and we'll have header.js. And now inside of this file, I'm going to press Control, Alt, and the letter R. I believe it's Command, Shift, and R on Mac. If I remember right, I believe a viewer told me that, but I cannot confirm that. Right now, I'll type underscore R-A-F-C-E, and this is because of the React Snippets extension that I'm using. Starts out with ES7 if you're looking that up, and I'll have a link to that in the description as well. But here is our functional header component, and this is a basic component here. I'm going to go ahead and switch this out for a header element for now. And I'm also going to put in an h1 and we'll just say header so we can see what this is and save this much and now I'm going to go ahead and whoops that didn't complete as header there we go header now I'll save that and I'm just going to press control a to select all and copy and we can go ahead and do that instead of a snippet here in just a second and replace some things so the next one will be a nav so let's create a nav js Inside the nav, I'm just going to paste everything we had, but then I'll select header and I can go ahead and do control D to select all of these, change that to nav with a capital N, and where do I need nav to not be a capital N? That is in the elements. There we go. So that's an actual nav HTML element that we see there, so you don't want capitals on that. Otherwise, we'll leave this now and save nav. And now the next one we want to create is newpost.js. 
inside of new post, I'm once again going to just paste everything in and select header and then switch that to new post. I did control D to select all of the header examples, but here, instead of this new post, let's go ahead and just put a main element because that's what this will be. And now we've got our new post here to export. And then we need a home. I guess I could have done home first. But new post works. Inside of home, I'm going to once again paste in the full component, select all the instances of a header, and put in home. And then once again, I'm going to change the home element here to a main element and save. And now we need an about. Dot js paste this in again select all of the header change this to about and then where about is showing up as a component element we'll just change this to main and sometimes it's not changing that tag as fast as I'd like it to but there we've got another main element for about we need a post page js paste this again, select all of the header, change it to post page, then select the post page in the element and change that to main. It didn't change the ending one for me, so I'll do that now. And I believe we had a missing component. Once again, pasting in, selecting all of header, changing it to missing, and then changing the element to main. Okay, saving those, I think we're still missing a footer component. So I'll paste in the header. And for the last time, selecting all of these and changing the footer to a lowercase footer, because that is an HTML element as well that we want to use, a semantic element. So we save those and we should have all of our different components. Let's go back to the app.js and just check the list. See if we left anything out. No, I think we've got everything and now we're importing them into the page. So we're ready to use them inside of the JSX of our app. Before we put any routes in, let's go ahead and just put all the components inside of our JSX. So we have a header, we have nav, and now we have all the different main element possibilities. So here we go with the home component, and then we'll have the new post component, and then we'll have the post page component, and the about component, and then let's even put in the missing component, and now let's put in our footer component. This will not present an HTML standard when we launch it, but this is in development. We will not be showing any one of these five at the same time. So from here, let's go ahead and open a terminal window and type in npm start to launch a dev server for our React app, and we can see how this renders. And now we can see our app to the right in Chrome, and we can see each component has rendered, and we have the H1 that we put inside of each component here to identify what it is. Now we're ready to set up routing so we don't see all of these at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and resize Visual Studio Code so we can see it and we can see our Chrome version, our dev version of the application at the same time. And I'll go ahead and close the terminal window. And if you recall, we already put our app inside of the React router and we're routing the path. So now when we route to the app.js, this is already inside the router, but we always want to show the header and the nav and the footer. So we don't really need to route to those anymore because they're already in the app. What we do need to do is switch between what shows up as our main element content. So we wanna put a switch at the beginning of these components that we're going to change out and put the closing switch there. Now I'll tab these over because they'll all be nested within the switch. And now we need to specify routes for each one of these. So for the home page, we'll start out with a route component here 
And then we're going to put path equals, and we'll put the slash because we want this to be the default with the root path. So it shares the path with the app component overall, and we're already routing to the app component that contains all of these components. So now we have surrounded our home component with the route of path. Now this could create an issue, but I'm not going to show you what it is until we actually have the issue here to demonstrate. So for the next one, we're going to create a route, and this path is going to be equal to not just the slash, but also post. And now we'll go ahead and put that closing route after it as well. So we'll tab in our new post and have the closing route. Now the next one, the post page where we see details for each post, this will have a slightly different path because we want to put a parameter in the path and we'll have to use another React router hook to grab that parameter. But here we're going to have slash post and then slash and put our ID parameter that will identify the blog post. And now we can take that closing route and we'll tab in the post page and put the closing route before the about. Now with about and missing, these are two components that I do not expect to be passing any props to. So we can do that just a little bit differently. If you remember how we handled the route for the app itself inside the index.js, we can do the same thing here. So we can say route, and then let's specify the path, and the path for about will be slash about. And then we can specify the component. And here I'm just going to put about. Now I'll do something very similar for missing. So we'll have route, and the path for missing is going to be a catch all. So if none of these others have applied, essentially this wild card here, the asterisk, will then catch what isn't caught above it, and this component will show. So I'll spell component correctly and put missing in. And so for our last two routes, we can just put those all in one line. We have about and missing. Now I'll go ahead and save this, and let's look at the changes in Chrome. We see header, nav, home, and footer. Okay, so that seems right. We went to home. But now let's try to go to post in the URL bar, and we still get home. So that's an issue. We don't want home. We want the new post component to then show. So the problem here is this is like a waterfall inside of Switch. And as soon as it matches something, that's what it delivers. Well, the path with the slash is going to match all of these other paths, really, except, of course, missing. And it would match that, too, if, if it hadn't already matched ahead. So it matches the first one, and then that's what it routes to. So we need to add a keyword here, and this keyword is exact. So let's save our page now, and now post delivers the new post. And that's great, but what if we had a post with an ID of one? We're wanting to see the first blog post, so we put in that parameter. We still get the new post, and that's not what we wanted. We wanted the post page. So we also need to add the exact keyword to our slash post route for the new post because this other one shares this route as well. And now you can see we get post page after I save that change. So we needed to add the exact keyword to both of these. And now after post page, there's nothing else that would match post. So let's go ahead and check our other routes. I'll switch to about in the URL and we get the about. And now I'll switch to abouts. Well, that would probably still match about. Now let's see. Nope, it matches missing. So it can't be just something with this and then whatever else is after it, like an S for abouts. So then our wildcard grabbed it, and that's exactly what we expect. So any route that doesn't exist will not be matched, and then it will default to this wildcard. So all of our routes are working as expected now. With the main routing for our app complete, now we will talk about adding links and how React Router handles those, and we'll also add some custom hooks like use history that I've indicated up here already with the import, 
and how React Router works with those and grabbing parameters from URLs. And we'll do all of that as we build out this blog application in the next tutorial. Hey, thank you guys so much for liking the video if it helped you get started with React. Also, I appreciate you watching and subscribing. It's helping my channel grow. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.